What's up guys, Epic Tim here. Sorry it's a little bit loud. We got the fans going today. It is paint day. Let me show you what we got going on. So we've got our light. We've got everything hung. All the arms, all the pieces that are going to get rust bullet paint. And we've got everything sanded ready to go. Got a little bit of etching. I just couldn't get off, but we're going to see what happens. Science experiment, I guess you could say. So everything's ready to go. We got our intake here. We got two uh, cotton filters on that. We've got our axle set up out of the blow zone. We've got a test box to spray our pattern on and check it out, make sure everything's going well. And we've got three cheap, like 95 cent furnace filters on the exhaust fan to help keep everything out of the driveway and truck. But with that said, we're gonna get things going. been about an hour since we got everything set up and it's actually to the point now where we can apply another coat. Rust bullet says two to six hours but I've been blowing air through here the entire time so I think that's sped it up a little bit. I don't know with this paint gun if I have enough to actually shoot color so we're gonna try. Maybe we can get the axle housing done but the little bit of paint pint that I bought is probably not gonna be tall enough to cover the siphon inside of the can. Uh, maybe I can figure something else out, but looks like it's going to be challenging at best. Wish me luck. So here's where we're at right now. As you can see, we didn't end up painting the floor because we actually started to run out of material. Right there at the end, as you can see, cutting it in. I had to go back and refill. I had uh, a little over half the can in there, so now I'm going to end up a little short. So I'm going to try spread this out a little bit thinner, I hope and see if we can get this thing coated and covered with two layers like you're supposed to. Um, with that said, here you are. There's a couple little spots in here that I missed on the first pass. Not much at all though, just a little tiny line. I think we're gonna be all right. I'm gonna try and do a little better job on this spray to get inside of these joints and cracks a little bit more. Uh, that's uh, where I'm worried about over time. If that starts to get a little water and salt or anything in there, it's gonna start to leave rust lines on the bottom. And the whole point of this is to try and avoid that. So here's the issue that I'm having with it right now. The paint is up to about here, and you can see it's got a really big siphon on the end of it, which comes down to right about there. So when this is in the can, I'm still a good half inch away from the bottom, so I can never really use everything in here. I have to have some residual waste just to use the product, which is not working out for me. If I had an HVLP with the top feed, wouldn't have been a problem. But if I was using the top feed, I wouldn't have been able to get nearly as high to the floor. With this gun, you can get right up to it.
straight into color now. What's up everybody? Quick change of clothes. We went ahead and uh, tried to clean up the best we could, but as you see here, uh, we ran out of solvent right in the middle of uh, getting that last coat down, so I, uh, I'm i going to have to owe Bruce a new paint gun. Good thing that these are only about 10 bucks at Harbor Freight, so I think we'll be able to figure it out. Look at the color on that. Man, that just came out fantastic for doing it in a garage. I think she's pretty smooth. The silver went down pretty well. Got a couple of spots that it bubbled up on me. Spot where I touched it with the glove too early to test it, see if it was done. But overall, in pretty good shape. So I actually started to run out of rust bullet halfway through the first coat. I knew I wasn't gonna have enough, so I didn't paint everything I wanted to. I wish I would have bought more in preparation painted the whole floor and everything else but there just was not enough in the can we got all the bare steel covered and coated u-bolts axle housing looking fantastic so a couple of tips and tricks if i had to do this all over again what would i do and what would i not do uh good ideas involve draining the air and water out of the tank completely and then filling it back up before i got things started that kept uh moisture content down which helped out quite a bit I'm sure. Putting the tape on the outside and the inside actually worked out really well to keep any extra paint spray from getting onto the outside of the body even though we had it covered in plastic. So if I had to do this all over again I would definitely still hang stuff off the bottom of the car 
but I would have definitely hung it a much lower, at least a foot. I had a hard time getting into some of these areas with the paint gun and not hitting it, tapping it, touching other things and having to go back and just give it a quick little touch up. And uh, those are the things you learn when you're not a painter. These guys were a huge pain. Um, every time I tried to spray it on here, did not work out very well. I ended up just grabbing them, picking them up, spraying them with one hand over the other. You can see the first time I did that, didn't work out so hot because I had a hole in the glove. But we're going to come around. This will clean up fine. These came out okay. I think if I had to do this again, I probably would have tried to run a zip tie or something on the outside of this, set it in a box to make a little pedestal, and then just came back and done the ends at a different date. Lastly, painting inside of here was really tough. If I had to do this again, I would put internal frame prep in here, and I probably will still go back and do that, but it would have been a lot easier to do that up front. There was just no way to get the spray gun in there. Similar problems had all up along here, but I really don't know what you're going to be able to do with that. This was also an issue to try and paint the top side of this. I'm going to have to get a mirror and see if that actually worked out or not. And then also, the floor. Really, really glad I put plastic down. I got most of the floor covered, but you can see here where it didn't. And I now have a line of paint over here versus there. The filters on the fans worked out really good. These used to be blue, and the fact that you can't even tell anymore tells me that this picked up a lot of paint, kept it out of my driveway and off my vehicles uh, out in the street. The intake fan that I had here definitely was picking up some paint, and I think what happened is I had two cotton filters on the back, which was probably too much. You can see there's absolutely nothing on the inside of that filter on this end. Uh, the outside filters definitely got some stuff on it. I'll show you that in a second, but the fan itself having all that restriction to pull through must have been pulling paint through here and then in and back out. So that actually ended up a little bit counterproductive. I can tell I definitely wasn't getting as much air into this tent as I was out of the tent. And you can see on this side, there's a little bit of dirt on here, but it's not much. I definitely didn't need two of those. And my last tip for a home paint booth would be more tape on the floor. So holding the plastic down to the floor definitely helped. I did that on this side, but not the other side and the front. And I should have put just a little more tape around to hold everything in. When I was walking around in here, the floor started to get real sticky. And you can see how much paint's down there. And it was sticking to the bottom of my shoes to the point where the bottom of my shoes are even covered in this stuff. So it's all over the place. Tyvek suit, great investment for the three, four dollars that it cost. Although when you're using that Tyvek suit, you will sweat the bejesus off of you if it's remotely hot outside. That thing has no ventilation whatsoever. I think it goes without saying, respirators mandatory. Here's a good example of how much paint that this cheap 94 cent stack of filters cost. Here's the side that was or sucking through the fan. Here's the side that was against the fan. Night and day difference. And that's where we're gonna close it out for today's video. So if you like what you saw and you need some more Epic Tim in your life, hit that subscribe button. I hope you'll join us next time for final assembly and then testing. Thanks, have a nice day.